Hi everyone. So we are again <laughs> at our storage lot. We haven't been out, but we did go to the early bird RV show and sale in Abbotsford, BC. Uh, just yesterday actually. Yeah, I managed to go out on the first day of the show, first thing in the morning. But what we thought we'd do this time is in previous, if you've watched some of our previous videos, we've covered you know a large number of RVs that we've seen. Uh, and this time, this time we thought we'd just focus on really three that, that we liked. Mm -hmm. And um, of course being uh, Class B van owners, uh, two of the RVs that we take a look at were Class B vans. And then the third was a small trailer that we've uh, liked in the past. So we hope you enjoy this video. went on the first day and uh, we arrived just shortly after they opened 10 in the morning yeah uh, they had a lineup of people checking your vaccine card and to make sure you had your masks but it was uh, seamless before we get started on the three rigs that we looked at uh, we did meet a couple of our viewers and we were really, really yeah. excited they came they approached us uh, Pete and Alex it always surprises us when someone recognizes us, especially when we're, I guess, we're wearing masks. Yeah. Uh, but it was so nice they stopped by, and so we uh, we got to chat with them for a little while. And actually, what was really exciting news is that they're actually in the process of building out an RV. So they've purchased a ProMaster van, and it sounds like they've already purchased a lot of the uh, things that are going to go into their van, and they've got a plan to uh, build it out. So that's that's really exciting. Yeah, so Pete and Alex, we look forward to maybe staying in touch with you so that we can chat about what you've been doing with your van. Okay, so without further ado, we'll talk about the, the three rigs that we looked at. And the first one was the Thor Talaro. Which is actually on a ProMaster chassis. So very similar to our van. It's the, I think the extended ProMaster chassis, roughly 21 feet long, standard six cylinder engine, front wheel drive, you know, same, same effectively as our van. We found the, the ProMaster to be a great chassis for an RV. Yeah. And the model that we looked at is the 2018 model and it comes with a pop top sleeping area on the top and it's accessed by a ladder and it has a wet bath with a cassette toilet. Yeah, there's another model apparently, uh, which we didn't see, a black tank model, uh, which is actually, I think, situated at the back. So the floor plan's a little different. Yeah. But but I, actually, I quite like the floor plan. It looked very usable. There's, a, I think, what will fold into a king-size bed yes. at the back. Yeah. It has a small little eating area near the front behind the driver's seat. So I don't know if you could sit two people there, but uh, at least for one person to sit down and have a coffee in the morning, if it was inclement weather, that would be nice. Yeah. And... It has a solar panel, 190 watts. 190 watts. Yeah. It, I think normally comes with a bike rack, but the salesperson had mentioned that they'd simply taken it off for the uh, RV show. It was one less thing that would be sticking, sticking out when they're trying to back a van into a narrow spot. Yeah, and the salesperson also noted that there's only one in stock right now, and only because it was a cancellation order. Yeah, so I think he'd mentioned that uh, typically you'd be looking at somewhere between, I think, an eight to ten month order period for that van. Now, you might uh, you might get lucky and they may have one in stock like they did. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to the next one. Um, we also looked at another camper van, which is the Pleasure Way Recon. Nice rugged 4x4 model. Yeah, and that's on the Mercedes platform. I think it's 144 Mercedes platform, so it's shorter. Most notable thing when we get in it is just how high up you feel and you know has a lot of ground clearance which i think having the four wheel or i think technically more like an all-wheel drive system because the i think the front wheels can only in the mercedes i believe can only have about 30 percent of the power transferred to them but you know the clearance i think would be really handy and of course it's got more aggressive tires now the recon's designed it's more utilitarian it seems very basic although i believe it has 300 watts of lithium so it's got uh, you know good battery system the washroom is a wet bath with a cassette toilet. And it doesn't have a traditional sort of kitchen. It's got a tiny little corner sink. The fridge is it's a cooler style fridge, so a little smaller, but again, very functional. So for cooking, it doesn't have a propane stove. I don't think there's any propane on board at all. Uh, what they have instead is an induction cook stove. It's a portable one, so it's actually hidden away. hidden away in a drawer, and then you have to pull it out in order to use it. And then you also have a little uh, pop-up lagoon table which is well mounted uh, just behind the driver's seat so you can swivel your driver's seat and use that for um, working on your computer or just sitting there and eating. 
yeah, we, we couldn't figure it out, but then we only had a couple minutes in the van. I think they advertised the van as a adventure van. And so again, it's more functional than form, I think. Another example is they don't have an actual gray tank. What they have are two, probably they look like maybe four or five gallon containers uh, where your gray water can go inside. So they've actually designed it, I believe, for winter use. They have additional insulation. The water system is all inside. The batteries are inside. You know, if you're using it in cold weather, you'd really have very few of any issues as long as your temperature in the van is above zero. And I think the, you know, that's how the design of the van is, is to be much more rugged. The bed at the back folds down, so if you don't need to have the bed down, you can have it up. And I wouldn't be surprised if one side actually probably turns into a workstation. Oh, and the fridge is actually a 2.1 cubic foot top loading Truma 12 volt and 110 portable fridge freezer. So it would run, you could run it, I guess, off your batteries if you have to, either through the uh, 12 volt system, or I guess you could always put on the inverter. I don't know how big the inverter is in there. Uh, I can guess it's about 3,000 watts. 2,000 watt. 2,000 watts. Zantrek pure sine wave inverter. Uh, touch screen control panel. Pleasureway has a nice control panel for their systems. It's a 400 watt solar panel package. And they also have a Truma AquaGo Comfort Plus water heater. It's actually a really great rig for those adventurers who like to get into the backcountry. The last RV we looked at was actually one of our, if not our favorite, small trailers out there. We've looked at it before in previous shows and it's made by the company called Armadillo and it's their backpack trailer which is their their largest trailer that they make and it's 14 feet. And I think what's so interesting about the company is it's first of all it's actually manufactured in British Columbia in Armstrong. It's kind of like a little elongated bowler trailer and their other model I think they're actually based on the bowler frames which is I guess uh, 13 and a half feet does look like a bowler. This one's a little bit bigger. What was interesting about it is it's sort of everything you need. It's nice, it's simple. All the, the standard features you'd see in a small trailer. So what stands out on this is also their storage area. So they have an option where you can have a sliding shelf underneath uh, the rear of the trailer. And what was interesting for us is they had, I think, two chairs, some sort of a portable kitchen, and some sort of other uh, small stand that was outside a table, I guess. And all of that folds flat and goes in this panel that fits underneath the trailer. So, you know, it's just handy if you have anything wet or just some stuff that can take up a fair amount of room. You could put it under the storage in the back, which I think is, is really handy. One of the nice things about the Armadillo trailers is they're small and they're light. I think this... Depending on the options you put on, they're approximately 1,800 pounds, so you could tow them you know, with a, a wide variety of even smaller vehicles, which is, is handy, I think, mm -hmm. for, for many people. Uh, yeah, and inside the trailer you have the front table for two. Which well, converts can, to a bed. Yeah, which converts to a bed. Is You've got a portable toilet underneath the in the cabinet there in the front. Yeah, porta -po potty Porta potty yeah. yeah. You've got a cooktop uh, with a fridge underneath. So the cooktop's propane. Cooktop is propane. Sink faucet. And you've got a rear dinette that also turns into a 76 inch by 47 inch bed. And a fresh water tank inside. Uh, you've also got a shirt closet and a furnace. Yeah, I mean, it's a very small trailer. Obviously, if you're pulling the trailer, you can keep some of the things that you're taking uh, in your tow vehicle. Uh, it does have a large number of options. The pricing, the base model starts just a little under $32,000. Um, you can add a variety of options, air conditioning. Uh, I think you can add a lithium battery system and the prices go up from there. I think they probably would price out somewhere around mid 40s, uh, fully loaded. You can check on their website. And those are the three that we actually took a really good look at, but it was fun just walking around and uh, checking out all the other rigs as well. So the other thing that we did there was spend some time, maybe too much time, at the Northern BC Information Booth. We uh, enjoyed chatting to the people that were there. Um, we remember, I remember we actually showed Alex and Pete uh, some of the spots on a map where we had been and made recommendations for them. It was a, yeah, it was just really nice to uh, revisit some of our trip um, and talking to some of their representatives. It was it was fun. Yeah, and they also showed us 
the places that we could go if we get over to the Cassiar Highway. Yeah, they made a number of recommendations, so we look forward to being able to follow up on that. Yeah, so uh, in case you guys are wondering, Finch is doing really well. There was one little hiccup last week. We had a little bit of a health scare. Yeah, we had actually booked the Skyview Campground and uh, the new campground, the full, full service campground in Manning Park. Yeah, first time we were going to go, yeah. we were looking forward to going, and as we were en route, uh, we put Finch into a new case a carrier that we had, it's sort of a backpack carrier, mm -hmm. um, but it didn't seem to work very well for him, and he, he was very uncomfortable, and... Uh, yeah, we, it was kind of a, like an anxiety attack almost, um, he, he started kind of panting, and you know, shaking a little bit, and, and his we, heart rate was high. Yeah, and luckily yeah. we hadn't left home for long so we just turned around right away and went home called the vet um, after an hour or so he was actually back to normal yeah he was but, fine yeah. it's just it just you know he, he's traveled with us before in other carriers and we've never had a problem so I think this carrier was a little smaller because it is designed to be a backpack and it just didn't work for him it didn't so. work he's a big big cat <laughs> I think it was just a little too small for him so we won't be using that one no, we, we're going to be actually using a, a new soft carrier, which is... Um, Even a little bit bigger yeah, than our, our previous hard carrier. Yeah, and you know, after this experience, we actually looked into it, and we learned that you have to really be careful that um, your cat has enough room to move around in a carrier. So um, a lot of people actually recommend that you get a, big, a bigger size rather than a smaller size for, Finch, for your cat. Finch is doing well and uh, he seemed to recover from all of that so yeah. uh, we're hoping so, we'll be getting out on a camping trip soon with him. Yeah so we'll try again. If you enjoyed this video please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already and we will see you next time. See you next time.